static NAT, another type of NAT is dynamic NAT and the third one is NAT overload or some of the users also call it as a PAT. I think you might be aware with the name of PAT, Port Address Translation. So these are the basically based on the configuration, but let me explain you what they are basically. So let us suppose we are having four guys here who want to go to the internet. So if they want to go to the internet, they need a public IP address. So we have taken these four IP addresses here, 200.200.200.247 and 8. If this guy want to go to the internet, what he will do? He will use this IP address and go to the internet or the, he will use the server whatever, whatever he wants to reach it. If this guy wants to do, go to the internet, he will use this IP address and go to the internet. But what happens in the static net, we do static configuration that if this guy want to go to the internet, he will always use this IP address. If this guy wants to go to the internet, he will use this IP address 200.4. If this guy 192.168.0.4 wants to go to the internet, he will use the IP address 200.200.200.8 and then only he can go to the internet. But this has fixed that he can, this guy cannot use this IP address, never. Because we have fixed mapping of these IP addresses. Here, our dynamic NAT gives a bit uh, we can say the efficiency or we have we can say at a service right that we don't need a static mapping of that one we are having a pool here that these guys want to go to the internet these are the public ip addresses here available if any of these guys want to go to the internet on the left hand side they can use any of the ip address from the public pool and then they can go to the internet so let us suppose this is our internet and if 192.168.0.4 wants to use the internet, he will take this IP address and then he can go to the internet, right? Benefit of this one is like this because earlier if we do static mapping, any of this guy 0 0.2, if it is not available, then this is free and still another guy cannot use this one. So that was the benefit of using the dynamic net that anyone can use from the available pool and then they can go to the internet. So this is basically a dynamic net, but this is not giving too much advantage because it's still we can you know, go to the uh, shortage of the IP addresses because that is still one uh, user is using one IP address to the go to the internet. So actually the problem what it was that we were running out of the ipv4 addresses is still we are the same where we were right so the shortcut of that one is our patch we call it as a port address translation so now what is happening that is the diagram of the right hand side that any of the ip address let us suppose this 192.168.0.1 wants to go to the internet then what they will do they will use the same ip address 200.200.1 but whenever they are going to use the internet they will go like this they initiated the request took the ip address and at the end they have added the port number 18 if this guy wants to go to the internet they will go like this public and then they will add the port number 19 at the end Similarly, if DAO3 wants to go to the internet, he will add the port number 20 and then he will go to the internet. Here the actual problem comes, right? That whenever our server here, he replies with something, okay, that there was a request, right? Because if this guy has requested any of this information from this server, this is going to reply. Now, if he's replying from to the same IP address, then it is very important that this is delivered to the correct recipient. It's not like that it has been requested from this guy and delivered to this guy, right? So for that one, 
who were the router or the device or firewall is doing the uh, this translation they are having a table created for that one like this similar like that's we are seeing here let us suppose this is our table here right this is the table so we are having information from the server whenever any request is created it is having the table here request comes reply comes is checks this table okay port number 18 it was requested by 0.1 if the reply come for the port number 20 then it means that it was requested by user port dot three. So normally we call it as a translation table or we call it as a NAT table. So these are the terminologies of the routers. Basically these are of the Cisco inside local, inside global, outside local and outside the global. So this is the basic idea. Uh, that's how we understand static NAT, dynamic NAT, and pat in the next session uh, we are going to cover the practical of this one basically we are going to implement in the firewall okay guys so till that bye bye see you soon yeah one more uh, thing uh, i want to tell you we are having one more terminology as a dnat destination nat if the time permits we will cover it later on okay thank you guys see you soon bye bye